Hi guys, Ms. Bosco here. I want to give you some help for the virtual urchin part 3 pH at various locations. So it's really important to read these instructions. Um, this video is focusing on how to help you out with this part down here making the graph. So notice that you've got to go to this website. When you click on it, um, it'll look like this. You should be under levels. Okay. Notice this little red box is a slider. As you slide it, the data over here changes. Okay. That is changing. So per the lab instructions, um, again, if you need help understanding what's actually going on in this chemical reaction, please rewatch this video. Per instruction number four, you're gonna click on this Google Sheet. When you do, it looks like this with also another tab down here. So notice these two tabs down here, you gotta be able to click on both, okay? Ocean pH, notice, ah, CO2 and ocean pH, CO2, ocean bicarbonate, okay? So those two pieces of data are here, CO2, okay? And doo -doo -doo, pH and bicarbonate, all right? So once you go through and finish collecting your data, you wind up getting, for example, this relationship right here, all right? Now, when you go to make a graph, there's a lot that you can do. Notice I will accept just a regular old graph like the one I'm going to show you, but you can improve. Okay. Notice feeling fancy. Try making your graph with two Y axes. Those are the vertical axes using these directions. When you click on that link, it'll bring you to just the results of a standard Google search. This is the help topic that Google provides you with. These are a little confusing, which is why I'm going to walk you through them. You can also make your graph even better by adjusting the minimum values in setup, and I'll show you that too. So let's just pretend you've got your graph data right here. Okay, so as always, you're going to highlight your data, click the insert chart, or you can click insert Whoa. chart, either one, and you will get a graph. Ta da! Look at that. Notice atmospheric CO2 is this line all the way down here. At the bottom, you can barely tell what's going on. It looks like it's flat. Okay. And then up here, you have the line for the bicarbonate. Okay. And that's fine. Again, you could do this for this one and the pH in your graph would be acceptable. But this is where we want to explore the power of manipulating your graph. Okay. So per these instructions, okay, if you look under customize and series, double click the graph. Customize is this option right here. And then we go all the way down doo -doo 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 -doo, to where it says series. Okay. We want to adjust it so that we have two Y axes. So I only want to apply this to my bicarbonate or if you're working on pH or pH, let's leave CO2 on this axis. Okay. So we're going to take bicarbonate. And instead of it being on the left axis, see where it says axis down here, click that drop down menu. Now we can add a right axis. Holy cow, look how much better that graph is. So why is this graph so much better? Think about it, right? So the big difference here, these numbers are really different scales, okay? This one maxes out at 24, oops. Whereas this one maxes out at 2017, okay? 2017, that's why the first time around, our blue line was all the way down here. Okay. So we can improve this graph even more though, to show the relationship more closely. The way we can do that. Okay. Again, we're going to stick with vertical axis or right vertical axis. So now it's just saying that vertical axis means left, whereas the right vertical axis is the right vertical axis. Okay. We can do something called adjusting the minimum value. That's basically the same as inserting a break. Okay. So if you look, this is kind of wasted space down here, isn't it? There's nothing going on down here. So why not stretch the data where the lines actually are? We can do that, for example, by making the minimum five. Let's try making the minimum five. Notice how the graph already stretches out the data. But look, it's still wasted space. What about if we made the minimum 10? Oops, 10. Oh, now our data is really spread out. 
well, what about the ocean bicarbonate? Can we adjust that? Again, let's click on right vertical axis because now I want to adjust this one. Okay. I don't see any data below 1500. So let's just try making it 1500. Look at that. The line already starts changing shape. I still have wasted space down here. So I want you to play around with that and keep on adjusting it so that we have as little waste in space as possible. Like there's nothing up till 1700, for example. So what would happen if I made my minimum 1700 or 1800 or 1825? Okay, because look, our first number is not until 1849. So the other thing that's missing here, you need a title for your right axis and a title or label, aka, for your left axis as well. And you can do that by going to do, 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 chart and axis titles. Okay. And you just adjust which one of those things you're adding a title for. So you'll need a title for your vertical axis and you'll need a title for your right vertical axis. And that just depends on which one um, is bicarbonate and which one is CO2. So that is your bicarbonate and that is your CO2. So you should definitely add those labels with units. All right, guys. So you'll see some really clear relationships pop up if you manipulate your graphs this way. So I wish you the best of luck. The graph gets even better than this if you're willing to try out your graph skills.